Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video about modular colonization systems mod or MKS for short. In our previous video we've taken a look at production chains and in today's video we will take a look at logistics. Logistics is another feature that MKS introduces that allows resource and power sharing between vessels, which is very helpful when you need to build a really large and complicated base and you can share and exchange resources between vessels and buildings in that base without any action whatsoever from your side. So, let's take a look. MKS introduces a couple of different ways in which resources can be shared. Currently, there are four ways of resource sharing, each differing in range and requirements, and two separate mechanisms for power sharing between vessels. The simplest method is called scavenging and has a very limited range of 150 meters only. It does not have any special part requirement and allows for automatic resource sharing between nearby vessels. It does however require that a logistics consumer is present, but it's a technical detail. Most concerned MKS building pieces will have it already, so we don't have to worry about it. You obviously need to have storage capacity for a given resource on both vessels and that logistics consumer must be active, so destination part must be either crude or relevant converter must be turned on. In short, you must need that resource you want to scavenge. Scavenging also works only in one direction, that is, towards the consumer. To illustrate this method, I landed a small lander on the man with Jeb inside and just a tiny supplies package. As you can see, Jeb will last only for about 5 days with his onboard supplies, but luckily for him, he landed next to a giant supplies container that was already magically on the man. If we now speed up slightly, you will see that supplies in Jeb's lander will be replenished in 10% increments every time they drop below 50% of their maximum storage. No effort, no cost, though nothing is required from your side in order for this to work. Pretty cool, eh? Second method of resource sharing is called resource distribution and has a longer range of 2 kilometers. In order to make it work, you need to have a vessel that requires a specific resource, a vessel that produces that specific resource, and a qualifying truck to transport that resource between the two. Qualifying truck or rover must include either Caribou Expedition Rover Cockpit or any of the Surface Pioneer modules and must be crewed by a pilot. Now you just need to drop that rover in between your two vessels and resources should flow between them automatically. Here I set up a hydrates mining station and a water production facility that is within 2 km range and requires hydrates to produce water. In between there is a caribou based truck that can transport those hydrates between the two. And as you can see, whatever is mined in the hydrates mining facility is automatically transported to the water station. Third method of resource sharing that is perhaps simplest to understand and definitely simplest to implement is called planetary logistics. It covers the entire surface of the body you are on currently and there is no upper limit in the amount of resources you can store in the so-called planetary warehouse. In order to use this method, you need to have a logistics module on your vessel, such as Duna Logistics Center or Tundra Pioneer Logistics Module. You also need to activate it in a chosen container like I did here. You can store resources in the planetary warehouse without any crew if you have either logistics module or a material processing unit on your vessel. But to pull resources out you have to have a logistics module crewed by either a pilot or a quartermaster. Pulling resources out of the planetary warehouse also comes at a small cost each time you do it, but it covers the entire surface, so you don't have to worry about anything else. Last method of resource sharing is called orbital logistics and is a new addition to MKS. This method allows transfer of resources between two vessels within a sphere of influence. So between vessels that are landed or in orbit, it requires a new resource type called transfer credits. In order to schedule a transfer, you must first convert material kits, liquid fuel and oxidizer into transfer credits in the logistics center. Here I set up a surface base with enough materials, hopefully to send a resupply mission to an orbital space station that is currently in high orbit around the moon. In order to become a valid destination for orbital logistics, a Tundra logistics module is present on the station as well. As you can see, uh, this orbital station is currently missing some supplies, so it creates a perfect opportunity for us to test this logistics method. We start by converting fuel and material kits into transfer credits and once we have enough, indicated by the context menu, we can schedule a transfer to the station. 
grounds to orbit transfer take into account orbital period of the orbiting site and in our case it takes a bit over a day to complete. Once a transfer is scheduled, you can view it in the orbital logistics tab in the colonization dashboard. Now we only need to wait. This type of logistics allows you to send resources between your ground bases and your vessels in orbit, but it comes at a very steep cost. Additionally to those four resource sharing methods, MKS introduced two methods of distributing electricity to your nearby vessels. Parts that are power distributors and are crewed by an engineer can send power to nearby vessels that have power couplers on them. Dedicated MKS parts such as Duna series and microwave power transceiver as well as stock fuel cell array allow power transfer between vessels. There are two possible ranges, 500 meters and 2000 meters at which electricity can be transferred. My preferred solution is to make a big power station around Duna power distribution unit and attach microwave antennas to all nearby buildings and rovers. This way, the entire 2km network will be powered up by a single source. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and you've learned something new from this video and if you did, please consider liking it. I would also like to thank Luke, Joe Laughlin, Sharax, Carl Lott and all my patrons on Patreon for their amazing support. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, I'll do my best to answer you. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.